is my show. I'm finding stuff out that you want to know. Just ask me a question that I don't know. That's why finding stuff out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends on. Finding stuff out, finding stuff out, finding stuff out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Finding Stuff Out. Today I'm answering questions all about hair. It just came right off the top of my head. Get it? Top of my head? But do but actually, I want to try something new with my hair. This may not be it though, but I'll keep looking. Meanwhile, let's take our first question from Madeline. Why do people have hair? Why? I don't know why. By the end of the show, I'll give you my final answer. But the next question is from Iris. Why don't worms have fur? The short answer is because worms don't care how they look. Yeah, I really don't care. But seriously, only mammals have fur. I looked it up. Birds, reptiles, bugs, none of them have fur. And here's something cool. Our own hair is made with keratin, which is the same stuff as animal fur. So I'm guessing our hair and animal fur have something in common. Next question. Why do animals have fur? I knew that question was coming, and I'm ready for it. For starters, fur can help animals stay warm. Musk oxen have thick fur to keep them warm in cold, snowy places but a camel's fur actually helps it stay cool in the desert. You wouldn't think a fur coat would keep an animal cool, but camel fur reflects sunlight so heat can't sink in. And sometimes fur does other stuff too, like a male lion's mane protects its neck and fights. If you bite it, you just get a mouthful of fluff. But I'm not sure if my hair does anything useful. I mean, most people have hair for style, right? Maybe I'll find out differently but right now, I'm late for an appointment. Ah, so relaxing. Ah, ah, this stress-relieving scalp massage feels great. Don't worry, I can still do the show while I'm getting my hair done. Here's a question from Maxime. Why do people start having gray hair? I haven't looked that up yet, but I bet Leslie knows. She teaches people how to be hairdressers, so she knows a lot about hair. Well, the reason why people get gray hair is because there's melanin in the hair, and the melanin has stopped being produced. Therefore, the colors that we see from melanin, blonde, brown, and red, they slowly start to turn gray. We even see it with university students. Sometimes when people are stressed out, they start to go gray early, and that's genetic or due to stress. Gray hair because of too much studying? Just kidding. So, how come I've seen old people that don't have gray hair? Well, generally speaking, it's because they're dyeing their hair. Can I dye my hair gray? I think it would make me look older and more mature, you know? We can't dye kids' hair without parental permission. Okay, so Leslie wouldn't dye my hair, but I really wanted oh. to do something new with it. Okay. So Leslie well. suggested a bunch of cool styles for me. What about a mohawk? Yeah. But it took a while to find one I liked. So we're gonna start off by shaving the sides of your head. Whoa, I said I wanted to look older. Didn't mean I wanted to be bald. Maybe a more 1940s look? Sure. Okay. It's not really my style. So while I'm getting my hair washed for my second style, let's take a question from Sheila. How many pieces of hair do you have? Well, just on my arms, I have one, two, three, too many to count, plus my head, plus my eyelash and my eyebrow, times two multiplied by the hair in my nose. Uh-oh! You're gonna make my head explode! Sorry about the mess. My head kind of explodes from time to time, but I'm fine now, really. So. How many hairs do we have? Well, on average, on our head, we have 100,000 hairs on our head. But that's nothing. 
The average adult on their body has about five million hairs. Wow, people are really hairy. Let's take another question. This one's from Kashmir. If you don't cut your hair, will your hair grow so long you can't see? Yes, Leslie used a special hair extending shampoo on me and now I can't see anything. Just kidding, there's no such thing as hair extending shampoo. So Leslie, what was the answer? Well, hair will continue to grow. It's like this flower. It starts off as a ball and then keeps on growing. Unfortunately, by the time the hair gets long, it usually falls out. So there's a good chance you don't end up like Rapunzel. So if you did have hair as long as Rapunzel, would you be able to climb up it? Hair is amazingly strong. If you tried, you could lift a 12-ton truck. However, your scalp would probably come off first. I guess that won't be our do try this at home. I did some research and I found this amazing fact. The longest mustache ever recorded was 4.29 meters. That's crazy long. If you had a mustache that long, you could play jump rope with all your friends without needing the rope. Nice stash, bro. Love it. Well, actually, it's my nose hair. <laughs> How's that, Harrison? Perfect. I love it. Thanks, Leslie. No problem. I love the spikes. Why doesn't it hurt when you get a haircut? When you get a bad haircut, it really does hurt. Your pride. Like the one my mom gave me. Like this. That's why I go to a salon now. But seriously, this question blew my mind. I mean, it hurts when you cut your skin. Why doesn't it hurt when you cut your hair? I looked it up, and guess what I found? The reason it doesn't hurt when you get a haircut is because your hair doesn't have any nerves. Like your fingernails. It's basically dead. Gross, I'm covered with dead stuff. Ugh. Ugh, I don't even want to think about that. Now, let's take another question. This one's from Kenyon. Why is our hair different? Because sometimes it's fun to be different, right? Street smarts. So what do you like about your hair? Because every time I want to, I could do this. <laughs> I like my hair because it's long. When I brush it a lot, it looks like a mohawk. If it was bald, I don't think it would look good. <laughs> because it's beautiful and it has passion. Because it's a little afro. Because it's soft. Without it, I look really bad. <laughs> well, there you have it. The kids really do love their hair. Yeah! And I love my hair, too. That's why my name's Harrison. <laughs> okay, Kenyon, to answer your question about why we all have different kinds of hair, I checked, and it turns out we pretty much have the same hair as our parents. But there's a really cool scientific explanation on why. So here's how it works. Let's pretend these bouncy balls are hair genes. You get two hair genes, one from each of your parents. Let's pretend this black hair gene is from your dad and this red hair gene is from your mom. You obviously can't have both hair colors. You're not a zebra. So what happens? The genes work it out. Some genes are stronger than others. For instance, dark hair is stronger than light hair, so it almost always wins. See a redhead? Black hair wins. Now let's say both your mom and your dad both have red hair genes. They're the same, so they don't fight. It makes for a really boring game, but that's how you get red hair. My great challenge! Here's Ilyan and Justin. You guys are going to be playing Guess That Fur. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Here are your squeak toy buzzers. When I'm going to be showing you animals on that screen, and you're going to try to, well, guess that fur. When you think you know which animal the fur belongs to, just give your buzzers a squeak. Here's our first mystery animal. Leopard? Correct! Yes! It's a leopard's fur. It's spotted so that they can blend in with their background, which helps them sneak up on their lunch. Second picture. What do you think? Snow leopard? Uh, no. Do you have a guess? A wolf? No, it's not a wolf. This is a seal. Seal's hair repels water so that when they're in cold water, they don't get too cold. The third animal is? Mm -hmm. 
Fox? Nope. Lilian, do you have a guess? No. No? <laughs> it's fine. I'm just kidding. It's a clown wig. I'm just seeing if you're on your toes. Next animal. Sheep. Correct. You got it. Here's a cool thing I found out about sheep. Wild sheep don't have wool on their bodies. They actually have hair. On farms and ranches, though, most sheep are the fuzzy kind. Those are the ones that give us wool for sweaters and blankets. Next animal. You got a pig? It. No, it's not a pig. Uh, a giraffe? <laughs> it's not a giraffe either. It's a hairless dog. <laughs> They're good pets for people who are allergic to furry animals. Pig. Yes, that is correct. It is a pig. Pigs have bristly fur. Wild pigs have even more bristles. The same stuff hairbrushes are made of. So if a big animal wants to eat them, it's gonna get a mouthful of hairbrush. So the points right now are at two for Justin and one for Ilyan. The next picture will be the last one. So Ilyan, it's up to you to tie it or Justin, it's up to you to win it. Here we go. Llama. No, it's not a llama. Iron. Nope, it's a chinchilla. Chinchillas have long fur to keep them warm, but they hate to get wet. They come from mountains where it doesn't rain very much, so they take sand baths instead of water baths. So I guess Justin is our winner. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> Why are some people bald? A flat earth corner! Why are you bald? Because you don't buy my snake oil. Just one drop rubbed into your scalp and your hair will grow back full and luscious. See, now I have a full head of fluffy hair. And you can too for only $19.95. Guaranteed to grow hair. Great for beards and mustaches too. Just don't spill it or you'll end up with hairy feet. So good. For centuries, men have used all sorts of magic potions to stop them from going bald, but none worked. Most baldness is caused by genes, and I'm not talking about these genes. Not all bald people are really bald. Olympic athletes sometimes shave their heads because they think it will help them run or swim faster. And some people shave their heads just because they think it looks cool. Hmm. That's a look I've never thought of for myself. Nah. Let's move on to the next question. Can mankind grow fur? I'm gonna try it right now. <laughs> oh, hey, look at that. It is possible to grow fur. It gets in my eyes and it grows quite long, but it's mine, it's my hair, it's my hair. It's made of dead stuff, I don't wash it enough, but it's mine, I don't care if you stare. Cause it keeps my head warm, keeps me dry in a storm, lets me know I'm not boring, so there. From my scalp where it grows, to my nose and my toes, it's my hair, it's my hair, it's my hair. Just kidding, but fortunately, I'm here with someone who can answer your question. Hi. Hi Harrison. So I'm here with anthropologist April Noel, who works at this cool university with a bunch of bones and fossils. So, why don't humans have fur? Actually, we kind of do, in the sense that hair and fur is really the same thing chemically. Mm -hmm. We just use a different word. So we use hair to talk about what humans have, and we use fur to talk about what animals have. Can I see your arm for a second, Harrison? Sure. So actually, humans have the same number of hair follicles all over their body as a gorilla. It looks like so much more. Well, that's it. It's not as dense, it's a lot finer, but it's exactly the same. And in fact, a long time ago, our ancestors did have fur, just like gorillas. So how exactly did they lose their hair? Did they leave it at school or something? <laughs> not really. Um, losing our hair, or, be, or more correctly, kind of having the hair that we have now, happened maybe one and a half to two million years ago with this guy here, Homo erectus, or maybe even a little bit earlier with this guy here, Homo habilis. Oh, hey. This guy looks like my great, 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 great,
<laughs> you might be right about that. Yeah? Yes, because we're all related to these guys right here. In fact, all of these ones on ah. this table. Whoa, that Harrison looks just like us. Yeah, good looks run in the family. So hairlessness goes along with a whole bunch of other different changes. One of those changes would be the fact that we became upright walkers. We started to walk on two legs. And that's really different from what, say, chimps and gorillas do, which is they walk on all fours. In fact, they knuckle walk. Can I demonstrate? I've always wanted to do this. Sure. Nice knuckle walking. Thanks. So did you notice how much of your back would be exposed to the sunlight? Yeah, there probably would have been my whole back. See, that's a real different thing. For animals that are on four legs, their whole body is exposed to the sun and they're really close to the ground, so they're really capturing all that ground heat and they get really hot. But for humans, because we stand upright, we have these bodies where air can circulate around us and that really cools us down. So I'm guessing the changes happen someplace hot? Yeah, in Africa. And in fact, anthropologists think that the safest time for our ancestors was at the hottest time of day, when all the big game animals like lions and so on were taking a snooze. Because if you look at us, we're not exactly scary. We don't have big fangs, we don't have claws, anything like that, we're really vulnerable. So we had to be kind of smart and we had to take advantage of that time when it was a little bit safer. I heard that when you have fur, you have more bugs. Is that true? Well, not exactly. In fact, humans have bugs all over their body and even inside us. We just can't see them because they're so tiny. It's disgusting. It's, can you check it and see if I have any bugs? Ugh. In fact, you have a lot of them, Harrison. What have you been doing? I don't know. This reminds me of a question that we got from Emma. Why does lice go in your hair? I get itchy just thinking about your question. Lice are tiny, icky bugs that like to suck blood from your head. The worst part is they're perfectly designed to cling to your hair, making it really hard to wash or comb them out. See those little claws? They hook right onto your hair. That's why they have special bug killing shampoo. Uh-oh. Do try this at home. Your question, Emma, has today's honor of being my do try this at home. So my school sent home a letter about lice, and there are actually two different things to look for. The first are nits. So let's use my Super zoom to take a look at my hair. Nits are the eggs of lice. They're little gray flecks that look like dandruff but they're really hard to brush out. And when someone calls you a nitwit, that means you have the brain of a louse egg. And when someone says you're lousy, they mean you have lice, which are these charming creatures. If you're itchy, look really closely at your scalp or use a magnifying glass to see if any lice are crawling around. Time for that special shampoo. Our hair doesn't just attract bugs, it also helps keep bugs off of you. The fine hairs on our body tell us when a bug lands on us. Oh. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Yay. Why couldn't I have landed on a sandwich instead? Eyelashes also help keep bugs out of your eyes. But quite frankly, these fake eyelashes are so goopy, annoying, and weird feeling, I think I'd rather have bugs in them. How do pop stars wear these things? Just for style? Speaking of style, here's a question from Shia. Why do boys have short hair and girls have long hair? Actually, they don't always. I did a lot of research on this and you wouldn't believe all the cool pictures I found. Turns out our hairstyles are mostly cultural. Men's hair can grow long too if you don't cut it. Sikh men never cut their hair. It grows so long, they wrap it up in turbans. And Manchu men in China used to wear a long braid that could reach to their knees. In the 1960s and 70s, hippie guys grew their hair long so they wouldn't look like businessmen or soldiers. But I'm not really the hippie type. I'm more high strung, or so my mom says. 
Anyway, it's sort of true that long hair used to be a rule for girls. So sometimes girls would cut their hair short in a way of saying, I'm not going to follow all your rules. Back in the 1920s, girls could make their parents really mad just by cutting their hair. Seriously, a girl with short hair was a big scandal back then. These days, though, lots of women have short hair because it's easy to take care of or because they just like how it looks. As for me, I think I found my new look, but I should make sure I answer the first question that started this wig fest. Why do people have hair? The big answer is... Hair does a lot of important things. It keeps you warm, it protects you from the sun, and if you let it grow long enough, you could even use it as a jump rope. It also lets you express personal style. This looks really mature. It's what judges used to wear to let people know they were really in charge. Now if my teacher tells me to spit out my gum, I'll just tell her, Overruled, madam! I put a picture of myself in this wig on the website and asked what you guys thought. <laughs> hey, I look mature. In this wig, I command dignity and respect. I guess hair can't do everything. This is Harrison signing off. It gets in my eyes and it grows quite long, but it's mine, it's my hair, it's my hair. It's made of dead stuff, I don't wash it enough, but it's mine, I don't care if you stare. Cause it keeps my head warm, keeps me dry in a storm, lets me know I'm not boring, so there. From my scalp where it grows to my nose and my toes, it's my hair, it's my hair, it's my hair. Oh, 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 oh.